Okay, guys, we're back out here. I think this looks absolutely mint. I am definitely satisfied. Definitely. Now, if we can keep that up on the rest of the body with the mint, I'm uh, picking out some of the paint here. I got here, 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 and here. We're going to pick out the paint here, sand that, and be done with it. I think I got a little white here, and I think that's it. And then, prep obviously, all these little white areas. Then we'll head to right over here. So, with that, guys, uh, let's keep uh, working. This metal's galvanized. Very odd. But I know parts of the car are galvanized, so this is galvanized. This is the car right here. This is just welded on top. So. Okay, we're getting somewhere. This plate's gone. That piece of rubber that I tried to save was not much of anything. It's gone now. So we're gonna sand this. We're gonna come up a little further on the column here. Okay, not much holding this column in now. And, uh, we'll call it good. We'll sand it up to at least flush here. So it does overlap. Um, let's work some of this out. I've been working on the tops here. Totally sure. And I went there and I did the whites with, uh, and I put this all with wax and grease remover a couple of times. Then I went in there with a scotch bright pad. Even got the edges with a screwdriver and a scotch bright pad. We'll talk about the fuse thing later. Uh, as you can see, those holes are blocked off. So, let's work out here. That's a little more presentable. Okay. Quickly. When a harness goes on, impossible. I mean, I'm bolted up from the backside. I have to pull the dash out of the car. Never happened in a million years. It's not a matter of not being able to barely get your hands up there. Impossible. It's actually the upper screw, the lower screw holds the fuse box. Never gonna happen. So I decided what I would do was, is I cleaned it really good, okay? And then I just masked off the center with a greasy uh, female pins are. And I taped it up really good. So basically what I'm doing is I'm painting that and the plastic around it. And when I'm done painting the engine compartment, I'm going to go in there with a tiny little brush and some satin black paint, and I'm going to detail it. It's the only way I could do it. Um, so I'm going to try and obviously mask it. I'm going to mask it better than that. Uh, but there will probably still be like a white line or something. So I'm going to work on that. Uh, this over here, this was Junior's boo-boo. And uh, this is not a big deal, you know, but I explained to him, Junior, you know Junior was stripping this thing. I'm just cleaning it up, okay? Basically, if it didn't sit outside for a month or two with no wood on it in the rain, I wouldn't have had to clean up as much as I did. I just had to make sure I got off any surface rust or anything. He actually did a very good job on this. I'm definitely proud. Uh, one of the boo-boos was is he painted the foam around the blower motor, and you see that. So I had no problem fogging on it. Uh, that's another thing that's going to be very tricky. We're going to have to figure out something to do that's pleasing to the eye. I will come up with something, I have no doubt. Um, but I will come up with something before I paint the engine compartment. I'm going to decide how I'm going to do it. Uh, I will sit and think about it. Um, basically, I could not tape the back side of those holes. I could not get up there to do it. There's so much crap. And this thing has a tray under the compartment that I grabbed two shirts and went around the steering column and held them back a little bit. And that's what blocks those two big holes in the bottom of the steering column. And I'm up with the column at least another half to three quarters of an inch higher than what's seen. So we're good. I slid the thing apart, I painted it, I twirled it, I did everything in stages and then you slipped everything laying the way you see it. Uh, basically anything that's going to be a different color on that is that plastic piece and that snap ring uh, thing which I have to decide. I'll probably just do that a quick cast iron just to make it look like you know you cared. 
Uh, this brake line I ripped out of the car. This one I was gonna, but it'll drip on the frame rail. So the two front, front brake rail uh, brake lines are coming out, and the back one's actually gonna come out. Uh, the one you see looped to the top is just sealing up the hole. I put that in there when Junior starts stripping everything down. There is a pair of lines that run on the firewall that go there to the master. And uh, that's probably the only thing I'm going to reuse. Technically, the rubber line is on this side, on the Ford Explorer, okay, to the rear, and then it does all its crap. My car, it's on this side. Now, you can switch the brake hoses and, and achieve the same thing on the rear. Uh, which is probably what I'm going to do. It really doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't pay for me to have the brake line come over there and then come back over and then to the back of the car. And I don't like to have brake lines cross over anywhere near a drive shaft if I can help it. If I can help it, then whatever. Um, so, uh, just one or two small things and this thing is ready for um, epoxy and high build. And then me and jo Junior, me and Junior are gonna put the motor in and uh, wrap it up and leave it like that and continue to work on the car. Get the motor out of the way, because then if anything has to be altered, I could just grind this crap off and alter it. Um, thanks for the response on the, uh, the bolts on the upper control arms, Ken. I know they're definitely spring-loaded. I was gonna uh, compress them. Um, I'm trying to avoid doing a complete front end rebuild at this point. You know, it's just calling me a 70,000 miles on it. Everything is good and tight. Um, so that has to be like a later on thing. We do have time constraints, so this car would be even further apart. Uh, I have no choice. I have no choice. You guys will see as time goes on why. Um, so, um, but I would like to clean up the front ends of those control arms where they stick through I think they look like total shit even if I wire brush them and undercoat them with a little texture on them I wouldn't have a problem with it and black them out and still change the bolts I just want to put the engine and tranny up in the car make sure I don't have to modify the tunnel not in the front in the back like I did on my wagon um, my shifter linkage and everything was very close to the side like this close so I massaged it out nicely, you can't even tell. Uh, I want to see if I got to do that. I'd like to do all that now before everything's painted. Because when this is painted, it's going to be like eggshells putting us in. I know it. And I know uh, Junior wants to sand the headers down and paint them white. So I told him that's after. That's when we're fitting it in the car. Final. They'll get destroyed at this point. Since the motor's broken in, he's not going to burn the paint off. So. Um, but uh, that's it guys, it's been a long process. I can't believe I spent this much time on the engine component. Junior sanded my car in two afternoons after school when he was seven years old. And then I, I went to towel paints and ordered a couple of, uh, it was enamel, you know, custom mixed uh, Empire Gold. I had ordered a couple of cans of Empire Gold, put a big respirator on them, and he went in there and painted. So, I have a thousand times what time into this one? <laughs> uh, that's why I never want to pull the engine out of the wagon. Because if I do, this is what it'll look like. So, okay, guys. But I think everything, I think everything is looking good. This, you know, you guys really haven't seen. I can't really tell by the camera, uh, and you guys know that's not the cross member. Um, there is no paint chips anywhere, meaning that were remaining, that are feathered over. I'm sure there's some paint here and there that I never picked up on that Junior left, but there was nothing like that you could see anywhere. Even those four areas. One, two, three, four, oops, and down over there. Gone. I went there with a razor blade and I, sc I scraped the paint out. Then I went in there with uh, some 120 and worked it. Then I hit it with a scotch bright pad. So... That's it, and when we got down here, that's done. So, I think we're good. Still got a long way to go, guys. 
But, uh, there's nothing here I'm, we're not proud of. So, like I said, this is Junior's work, not my work. I'm just making sure there's no rust. So, so the paint can stay as long as possible here. So, this is, I am going to say it, this is going to be the C word, the paint. Because I'm painting this and the cowl at the same time, so the cowl has to match the car perfectly. And I'm doing this in two stage, so that means the cowl will be done in two stage, and that means this will be done in two stage. Okay? And let me tell you, I don't know what's going to happen first, me bumping the paint or runs. Because <laughs> if anybody's ever painted white, <coughs> you lose track of where you are when you clear coat them. So, yeah. And Junior stole one of my lights. One of my lights is gone. There's uh, uh, new members of the family coming. I think uh, tomorrow or Saturday. So Junior needs the light. So uh, you guys will see. Should be fun. Add a little life to the house. Okay, guys. Um, I guess that's going to be it for tonight. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.